Excellent. Well, thank you, Tyler. So um, we have been off the record because we have been doing some lovely get to know you activities with our new members. And that was super fun. And thanks for sharing everybody. It, have any visitors shown up who would like to comment or seeing none. Um, we are going to move on to new officer elections. And I'm going to turn it back to Tyler. All righty. Thank you so much. And uh, we have now entered our first meeting of 2022. And um, we always kind of start off with election of officers. And it's always nice to do a little get to know you um, uh, activity so we can get to know some of our new folks. Um, we've done introductions. Um, one note that uh, before we get too far into the agenda is that as you recall, or as you may want to know, is the chat um, is a good place to um, either put your name in there to say you want to speak, you can add things, but remember that anything in the chat will be recorded and that will be on the city's website for anyone to see. So just keep that in mind. Um, and um, you can always raise your hand. Um, but we try to be as informal as possible, but at the same time, trying to keep some normalcy in, in our meetings and running of our, our meetings. With that being said, moving into the election of the UROC officers for 22. And uh, Rebecca has been our chair this past year. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Alan Kennedy was our vice chair and thanks to Alan, his time. Um, he actually got to run a, a meeting or, or two maybe. Even. Um, and so that was, that was fun. Um, and uh, this is a chance to either nominate someone for chair and vice chair, um, or if you are interested and are not nominated, please raise your hand and we'll get you in there as well. Um, Rebecca, I would say that we will start with chair if you're okay with that um, and nod of a head will be okay. Okay, yeah. so uh, I am looking for nominations for chair for URAC of 2022. I'm going to nominate Eric. Okay, so Rebecca has nominated Eric Lear. Uh, any others who would like to nominate or nominate themselves for chair? Is Rebecca up for doing it again? Or is she I, tapping out? I'm tapping out. I, gotta, okay. I got a new baby. The, it's I a figured. Little... Just thought I'd ask. Okay. <laughs> thank you. I'm going to nominate anyone. <laughs> Good, thank you. Uh, any others for chair for 22? And Eric, are you okay with the nomination? I am. Thank you. Okay. Any others? Going once, twice. Nominate uh, Nathan. Thank you, Oswaldo. Nathan, are you okay with the nomination? The smile on your face may say yes, but I'm going to have you try to unmute. Sorry, there I'm, un I'm unmuted now. Can you hear me now? Yes. My apologies. Yes, I uh, I accept the nomination. Thank you. Okay. We have two. Any others? Okay, going once, twice. Sold to Eric and Nathan. And so we'll do a vote. And I guess we'll go by, gosh, how do we do this? I don't think we've ever had actually two people. Maybe Rebecca. raising his hands. Instead okay. of like saying I, I yeah. don't know. Are, are they supposed to be like secret votes or is it like? Well, I think do we have to have a second first? Oh, I'll second both of them. Or, Wait, or, I can't second her. Do I hear a second for Eric Lear? I second Eric. Thank you, Paula. And do I hear a second for Nathan Curley? Yeah, I, I'll second that one. Okay. Thank you, Kelly. Then I would say it was a vote. It was a okay. Raise hands. Yep. Raise hands. Mm -hmm. We'll do, um, since Eric was the first one, and um, he's also alphabetical, um, Eric Lear, those in favor of Eric, go ahead and raise your hand on the reactions. And Eric, you can vote for yourself, I assume, <laughs> if you want. 
you don't have to. Okay, I'm counting and please follow my lead. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven for Eric is what I see. And we have Scott. Hello, Scott. Hey guys. Hi, Scott. We're just doing our votes for chair and vice chair. We are currently in the progress of voting for Eric or Nathan for chair. And Eric has um, raised hands, and that's who we're voting for right now. If you're interested in raising your hand for Eric, you can do so, or you can hold off and raise your hand for Nathan. Yeah. All right. Good timing. Yeah, it was good timing. Okay, so I think I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is that what I'm counting now? Okay, if you want to lower your hands. Oh. And please raise your hand for Nathan Crowley. And I think I'm counting one, two, three, four. And Scott, did you have a preference? Scott can't find the raised hand. <laughs> Down on reactions. Ah, there it is. Thank yeah. you. There we go. One, two, three. And I think Paige, you had your hand up. So five for Nathan. It looks like I have eight to five on Eric. Okay. So I think we have our new chair for 22. Congratulations. Now, yeah, congratulations, Eric. Congratulations. And I'd like to nominate then Nathan for vice chair. Okay. Nathan, you okay about. with are you okay with that? If uh, I, I am, you get a second? Yeah. Okay. I, I'd like to second that. <laughs> so we have uh, Rebecca and who second? Did you catch Scott. that? Scott, uh, thank you. I did. Okay. And then any other nominations for vice chair? Going once, twice, so. All right, all in favor of Nathan Perley as Vice Chair of Iraq 2022, please raise your hand. Look at those raised hands roll in. Sure looks like it's, it's, it's as long as Paul is good, you're going to have it all I, to yourself. I, raised, I tried to raise my hand. It was a technical problem. I'm raising both. <laughs> I, think we, I think we are good. Congratulations, gentlemen, and thank you for uh, this coming year. And Rebecca, again, thank you so much for 2021. Um, I know it's been a lot for you this, this past year, so you did a great job, and we appreciate it. All right. Um, with that... Uh, Let's see. So, Eric, you're going to be running the show from here on out. And um, I'm going to let you just turn it over to me when you are ready. Yeah, I'll turn it back to Tyler for uh, Bureau Refresher and Activities. <laughs> okay. So, one of the, the great things about having a January meeting is um, not only getting our new officers, but also a moment to reflect and think forward to the year where we've been, and also to bring everybody back to the same foundation. We have new members, um, and we've got uh, folks who go, you know what, I need that, that, that refresher. Um, Chase and I spent a little bit of time putting together a PowerPoint, and uh, we're going to tag team that, that PowerPoint. Um, it's done in a way of um, asking questions and uh, but uh, and so go ahead and use the chat if you have um, thoughts towards the question. We're not going to spend a lot of time on the questions because we want to just get into the answers. And uh, but it's it's geared in a way for not only um, uh, giving base information, reminding information, but it's also to promote discussion. Um, and we can do that kind of throughout the presentation or do it at the end. And it, um, I'm, I'm okay with either way. I think Chase is as well. Um, so there'll be a lot of information that we're going to throw at you, but at the same time, um, please raise your hand and we're going to be able to respond and, um, and hopefully it works pretty good. Uh, Jerome and Caroline, you have your hands raised. Um, 
Uh, do you have questions or comments before we get started? I take that as a no. Okay. Okay, Chase, do you want to go ahead and start the PowerPoint? Yeah, I'll share my screen here. I want to say too, um, being on screen, it takes it all out of us. So if you want to, feel free to turn your camera off during this time. We'll close it out at the end and have some more open and general discussions. Um, and it's a great time to turn your camera back on, but don't feel like you have to be on record uh, during this whole thing. So let me share my screen here with you now. All right, checking to see everybody can see that. Oop. I don't know what that is. Okay. Tyler, take it yep. away. Okay. Thank you, Chase. Uh, so here we are, um, 10 years, and the Urban Redevelopment Agency, um, it was um, it kind of a, we're, we're one third of our way into where we're going. Um, and I, I kind of like this picture because it's an image that we don't typically get to see unless you're a condo resident. Um, here at the round. This is the Patricia Research Center for the Arts on the right hand side and the Bira sponsored project of the parking garage on the deep end. Crescent Street is the street that you see that's recently poured and at some point um, our grand opening will happen and Jennifer will have her wish for 2022. And this presentation is uh, for you all. Okay, Chase. So the first question for you, Tyler already kind of gave it away a little bit, but what year was the Central Urban Renewal Plan approved and by whom? Go ahead and drop it in the chat if you think you know. Any guesses are appreciated. All right, we have 2011, 2012. 2011 and voters, 2012 again, 2012, popular answer. All right, so the 2011s have it. Uh, it was approved by a vote of Beaverton residents and that's when it kicked off officially uh, our, we're calling the founding date of Bura. November 8th, 2011. So that means November of this last year was actually our 10 year anniversary official. So we did a uh, little post about it. We're gonna be doing more throughout this year to talk about the accomplishments, share it with the community. We should have be having an event, crossing fingers, uh, sometime this spring uh, to talk more about the stories of the buildings, the properties, but also the people that have um, been affected by positively and impacted also by the changes that urban renewal has brought along. So that should be coming up soon and hope to include you all in that as well. All right, Tyler, this one's you. All right, so what are some of the plans that helped get us here? Go ahead and pop your answers if you have a suggested response to the chat. Have a community vision. Equity and access, civic plan, visioning plan. Gold stars here come in Creekside master plan. Got some gold stars to our planning commissioners in the group. Definitely as we move to the next slide there, Chase. We have uh, multiple plans. And as Jen noted, Scott noted that the visioning plan was really kind of what just started the, the opportunity for urban renewal. Um, we had a community outpouring of uh, engagement. And at that particular time, um, multiple years ago before the plan was approved by the voters, um, the uh, city leaders were going, hey, what, what's happening? Uh, what should we be doing? How can we 
um, make our community a whole community for everyone. What are the things that you are interested in, residents of Beaverton? Um, I'm not sure if there's anybody that is on our advisory committee here that was a part of the Vision Act uh, advisory committee um, back in the day, but we have uh, some of our city councilors who were actually part of the VAC. In fact, uh, Mayor Lacey, 80, was also a part of VAC. And that was kind of the jump start of going, okay, let's let's do all these things. But one problem was the fact that we have lots of projects, but we're not quite sure how to fund it. The civic plan was the next piece. And as Scott noted in, in his comments, where um, it, it honed in a little bit further into um, different strategies that include the central city strategy, the housing strategy, and land use and transportation. Uh, that um, guiding document uh, moved us kind of further into um, you know honing in on what specific projects the community was interested in and then Jennifer mentioned the Creekside master plan and then the master plan kind of happened after urban renewal was approved but that even fine-tuned even more on uh, this area around Beaverton Central uh, so that was uh, if you if you can think of the map in your mind here a little bit, Canyon Road you know, on the south end, Hall Boulevard as it goes up towards Cedar Hills Crossing, and then Cedar Hills Boulevard on the west side, kind of makes a triangle if you if you can imagine that map, and in that triangle there is Beaverton Creek. Beaverton Creek actually is made up of three creeks, and those three creeks uh, meet at the transit center. So just outside of this triangle. Um, and um, this was a, a federal grant and that federal grant helped kind of identify even further refinement of, of projects. Um, at one point here, you know, maybe even this year, if we, if we can do it is, I'd love to sit back and do an audit of the Beaverton Creek Master, Creekside Master Plan um, because we have done so many of these projects. Um, there's a couple in there that are still waning and we need to be focused on them, but uh, that, that should be coming. Uh, all these documents can be found on the city's website. So at some point, if you wanna uh, learn more, please take a look. And that all led to uh, ultimately figuring out how to fund it, uh, these projects. And that's when we turned to the voters through um, um, uh, this development of the Beaverton Urban Redevelopment or the Central Beaverton Urban Redevelopment Plan. So we have the, the that little district map that was on the cover of the urban renewal plan. How many sub-districts are within the urban renewal district? Eric says five. Scott's got five with a question mark. Devin's five. Jen says three. Any other guesses? This is an easy one to at least throw a number out there. Five, Pearlie goes after the five. Serenity, like your answer. It is four. Next slide, Chase. So we do have four sub-districts. Must have been done studies or um, had Chase give you some good information, Serenity. Yeah, we have four areas. One, is, and they're not great names, but they are what we have. And maybe at some point, advisory committee could come up with better names so and we can go with it. But we have the transit-oriented area, which is north of Canyon, all the way from Murray on the west side to Walker Road on the north side of uh, along Cedar Hills Boulevard over to Highway 217. Old Town, which essentially encompasses the Old Town, an area that is uh, between 217 and the West Line um, in heavy rail, commercial office retail area. That's generally where Fred Meyer and the Beaverton Town Square is located and Griffith Drive and the office buildings there on Griffith. And then finally, the employment area which uh, Nathan was referring to earlier over where Western and Fifth and Allen Boulevard all intersect. Each one of them are kind of special in their own ways and have different needs. 
Um, and kind of over time, we're trying to figure out how do we make sure that we spend um, um, some committed time, funding, resources to these areas and what their particular needs are. Okay, uh, so Tyler shared a little bit about the documents that guide Bureau. Uh, and one of those was the Central Beaverton Urban uh, Redevelopment Plan. Now, how many official goals are outlined in that plan that Bureau is to follow? Any guesses? Seven, okay. Six, 10, six. 12. <clears throat> and it's a bit of a tricky one, too, because the plan further breaks it down. So I think some of you might be right on the technicality on this one, too. As well as seven, seven. Okay. It is seven, seven goals and many, many objectives, uh, sub items, and, and things that fit into those goals that were outlined to accomplish that along the term of Bureau. We have some great pictures here. Uh, this is what is now BG's food cartel. We have, I think this is from the opening here, right, Tyler, or pretty close to it? Grand yeah, that, that's the grand opening, Chase. I kind of enjoy looking at this slide uh, just because it gives uh, kind of a perspective of you know, what a development looks like. And uh, this uh, is actually out my window in the office. And so I um, get a chance to kind of follow along with uh, the, what it used to be to kind of in progress to ultimately what the food cartel is today. And to a place that I don't need to tell all of you will has become an awesome destination. Uh, that I hear about from friends who moved to the area. They're like, we went down to that food cart place down there in Beaverton. Is that where Beaverton's at? Yeah, that's what's happening. Um, here are the seven goals uh, about engagement, adding value, supporting businesses, redevelopment, transportation, housing, and arts and culture. Uh, this is from our most recent uh, uh, Bureau annual report and five-year action plan, which you can find on our website and we'll share later. All right, Tyler. All right, so who contributes to Bureau? What groups, what people? Who, who? Anybody recognize this wonderful woman in the picture? Our good friend Carmela, who uh, left Urban our Advisory Committee a couple of years ago. All residents, says Jerome, city council and citizens, Nathan, businesses. <coughs> residents, absolutely. Okay, Chase. So kind of the governance piece of it, um, along with the residents that obviously um, it should be kind of a line item on, on this slide because I totally agree. Um, the Bureau Board itself is the decision-making body made up of the mayor, council, and four citizen appointees. We have a new citizen appointee this coming uh, year uh, as Sheila Greenlaw Fink has stepped down and uh, Cassandra Olvin from Tallinn Valley Fire will be replacing Sheila. And uh, so beginning here on January 25th, when the Bureau of Board meets, uh, you'll see Cassandra up on the podium. Okay, on the Zoom call. Um, and then if you have not heard, Councilor Mark Fagan has uh, elected to step down um, effective the end of December. And uh, so there is a vacant uh, city council position that is currently um, open. And I believe they're going to be going out uh, to vote in May. Then there's you. And of course, you and our advisory committee to the Bureau Board. Um, you, we hope to bring you as many things as possible to each month so you can have a well-rounded uh, perspective of of everything that happens within the district. Um, we have some committees who, you know, they focus on, on 
biking um, or bicycles or what uh, um, Oswaldo and Caroline came from the uh, uh, from DAB, um, which you know brings a lot of folks together and, and be thinking about kind of holistically uh, with the uh, advisory committee. We we hope to bring not only diversity equity to you and to be thinking about it, but how does that actually um, uh, uh, kind of come together along with these various capital projects to housing to um, small businesses and supporting of a walkable community. Um, how does the transportation system work with it? How do, how do we make sure that all the different elements that make up a community, and in particular within this district, then we can actually allocate resources towards? So um, you guys, you may not understand how big of a role you have because um, you know you don't get to actually vote on things. But every time when project manager comes in, you're giving them more and more information for them to go back and make better decisions and, and work on through the processes that they have um, formulated. We also have the budget committee, um, and uh, they uh, process the. the Bureau budget. It's a recommendation to the Bureau Board, which then in turn makes a recommendation to the City Council. City Council ultimately approves that budget. And there's 22 members on it. Uh, our Executive Director is Cheryl Tweedy. Uh, legal Counsel is Bill Kirby. Treasurer is Patrick Eau Claire. Um, Patrick is the City's Finance Director. Bill is the City's uh, a City Attorney. And Cheryl is our community development director. And then we have a bunch of staff who help support everyone that's working hard. Okay, Chase. All right. Who can tell us where Bureau's funding comes from? Couple of options here. One main answer, but some other areas as well. Josh wrote TGIF. No, not quite, Chase. I'm seeing TIF there, TIF, tax it's increment just... financing, the feds, city, taxes, tax increment finance. Thanks for the clarification, Josh. Um, income taxes. Okay. Okay. Bond. Interesting. Any others? Paula, is that James Bond? All right. First, and 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 Saint Nick as well. As well, yes. <laughs> yes, there's... that's what we call supplemental budget. Um, yes, there's the, the tooth fairy gets involved here and there. There's there's a there's a lot of funders. <laughs> so uh, a lot of good answers there. Um, there's several. The main one is, as Eric and Josh and a couple other folks mentioned, tax increment financing, or TIF. Um, the long story short is when Bureau is established, a lot of the special districts and taxing districts in the area, like Tualatin Valley Fire, um, like Clean Water Services, um, like Parks and Rec, THPRD, get together and basically say, you know, we agree to freeze at a certain rate of the money we're getting in from uh, property taxation in the area. We're going to freeze it at the level of when this starts, and we're going to get that same amount all the way through the time that Bureau is established and Bureau is going on. And any additional increase that happens on the assessed value and that taxation that comes from that, uh, this section here in the middle, will go to fund Bureau programs and funds and projects uh, with the hope that when Bureau is over with, the investments we'll have made with that money will go back into their pockets and their funds and projects when that frozen value, that initial amount, is lifted. And then all of a sudden, rather than dealing with that same amount they've been dealing with for 20, 30 years, it's going to jump up for them to this new value here when the plan, com uh, plan completes. So that's tax increment financing. Uh, Tyler, you know a little bit more. Did I miss anything on that? No, you did a good job there, Chase. Um, yeah, essentially how Chase described it is, is correct. And the, that collection of tax increment um, in the hashed area there actually goes 
back to Bira during that time. And so that is um, usually about $4 million or so per year that goes to, to, to Bira um, instead of those special districts. And there's some natural market increases and that's from the area, the urban renewal area. Um, but also to maximize that and to capitalize on that funding, we also line of credits. We've done bonds, uh, including a recent $55 million bond and uh, daylight loans with the city of Beaverton, all of which help us to get funds earlier into the system and the projects so that hopefully our investments by the time Bureau is done can then bring more value to the community and more value back to the special ta taxing districts. Uh, and you know, a little bit of money at first, can uh, a little earlier, can have huge benefits and potential impacts, as we'll talk about in a bit, down the line. Tyler? All righty. So uh, nice job, Chase. Um, and that, I think that's probably the, one of the hardest questions and one of the hardest pieces of urban renewal um, to kind of get arms around and understand unless you're a finance person. Um, and we're happy to talk more about that with you at, at any given um, at least pass it on. So before I even ask, ask the question, Nathan says 150 M. And uh, so how much is Bureau's maximum indebtedness? Sorry, Tyler, it's a little... Well, it's okay. Too soon. You're vice chair and all. You get to do things special. No, 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 no. <laughs> Josh has got 150 as well. All right, Chase. We'll jump to the chase. It's $150 million. Um, so within the plan itself of what the voters approved was a maximum debtness of $150 million. That means urban renewal cannot spend more than $150 million over the life of the, that of the, of the agency or of, of uh, the, the plan. Um, and so once we hit $150 million of indebtedness, we can't spend anything else. Now, some things to be thinking about and contemplating, as uh, Chase was alluding to, is that dollar today has more value than the dollar tomorrow. So $150 million 10 years ago meant one thing, $150 million minus whatever we have spent to date um, in that remaining is not as much as it would, would have been back 10 years ago. So uh, to those first few years were pretty light. We didn't have much TIF. We didn't have a lot to go off of. Um, we were at the bottom of the barrel um, as far as the economy goes. Um, the city had purchased a couple properties in Old Town and um, we were able to get those jump started, which included the Barcelona and the Scala at Lombard first and second. Uh, and then um, ultimately the project that became the Rise Old Town, which is now called West something. West Line. West Line, thank you. Um, over by Dairy Queen um, was another full block that the city had put uh, uh, parcels together over time. And so those kind of bookend projects helped actually jumpstart um, our assessed values to grow and our TIF to grow, and then being able to um, actually enter in a line of credit and then bond against that line of credit. And so it's, it's um, um, kind of a tangled web um, that all makes sense to, to some, and we're, we're trying to make sense and being able to explain it to you. But ultimately, $150 million is our maximum indebtedness. I think the next one's mine, Chase. Uh, what guides the spending of Bureau money? It's kind of a tricky question. If you think back to the plan and you looked at the plan or looked at the five year action plan. Okay, good job, Josh. Five year action plan, the budget. Nice job, Caroline. Any other guesses? Your budget committee. Thanks, Jerome. Vision, Devin. 
goals and objectives of the community. Great, Paula. Okay, so uh, we talk we talk about the pie, and in uh, the action plan, you'll see the pie, and uh, and the plan itself is broken down into these pieces, and what we try to correlate is okay. The plan says forty eight percent of the bureau uh, funding should go to transportation infrastructure improvements. That's roads that it actually includes any utility structure and includes parking garages as part of that as well. Um, we have 33% joint investment, 8% debt service and oversight. So that's with our bonds and staffing, a 7% to incentive program, 4% to community identity building. And I think we'll jump to the next slide there, Chase, to get into a little more of the detail here. So the incentive programs, well, what, what does that mean? What does it include? Uh, so those are where our storefront improvement and historic conservation, which we have not done any of on historic conservation. I'm not giving you a nugget to think about, but I'm giving you a nugget to think about. Uh, tenant improvement program um, for our, what we have seen. And we've got a great program for our, our restaurants in, in our downtown. Um, pre-development assistance, so we have some pre-development grants. So those are incentive programs to help small businesses, to help developers kind of think about, you know, what or or property owners uh, to think about well, what can I do on my property? What 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 makes the most sense? Um, an affordable housing uh, developer may come knocking on the door, but they're not quite sure um, if it makes sense from an infrastructure. You know, where's the sewer? Where's the water? You know, how much is it going to cost me to underground the utilities? Hey, Vera, can you help support me with uh, figuring that out um, without them having to spend the upfront pre-development money? Um, so that, that's a, a program that um, has uh, done a great job of uh, assisting uh, owners or developers or uh, to kind of understand what maybe some of the constraints are and how to maneuver around those. Joint investment partnership programs, that's financial and technical assistance for housing, commercial, transit oriented development. Assistance to catalytic projects, including property acquisition. Increased capacity for industrial jobs. Um, so I'm gonna take the middle one there, assistance to catalytic projects and including property acquisition. As many of you know, Bureau has purchased a number of properties in the last couple of years. Um, uh, Janine Lambert, she's going to come in and talk to us here probably in early spring, late winter, uh, to talk about some of her the acquisitions and the disposition of those properties, um, and then um, uh, some other elements of that property management during that time, and also um, tenant relocation and how we're trying to assist um, with relocating if we do buy a property. Uh, catalytic projects are, are big projects. Um, the Westgate, uh, just across the street from the garage, which was the Westgate Theater site, which now has um, 215 uh, new homes and the Hyatt House Hotel um, was uh, received catalytic help um, in order to make that work because we knew that having the increase of folks living in the central core um, along with uh, visitors coming in and being able to stay at a hotel and then walking around our downtown. These are huge catalytic projects that are putting millions and millions of dollars um, into um, our downtown. Um, and so a little bit of our money can go a long ways of helping them. Community identity, we'll talk a lot about this, but gateways, directional signage, streetscape improvements, creek enhancements, creek enhancements is an area that we need to spend some time on. The loop would be a good streetscape improvement um, example that um, we'll, we'll hear more about uh, uh, along with what we've heard in the past. We mentioned um, on transportation infrastructure, uh, includes parking structures, um, you can see utility, transportation connectivity, sidewalk infill and then the debt service and oversight. Uh, Jerome asks in the chat here, do we have gateways? It's a great question, Jerome. And um, we have identified gateways in a couple of our different plans. Uh, and um, um, if you think of Old Town, and if you're on Hall heading northbound by the library at Fifth Avenue, 
and one of the, the signs there as you enter into Old Town, um, I, it's um, part of the, our uh, wayfinding signage that happened a few years ago in Old Town that probably needs to have a, another look and, and sprucing up. But it's, I think it says Old Town, you're welcome to Old Town or something to that effect. That's one location. Um, otherwise, we have identified other gateways um, on Canyon um, and Beaverton Hillsdale Highway, and then also kind of as you enter um, from Hall going southbound, where the Art Center is located. Uh, so we do, we haven't spent too much money on gateways, but we can talk more, especially if that's of an interest to you. Eric says, how is it determined for things like infrastructure projects? How much comes from beer and how much comes from the city management? Great question. Uh, it it kind of depends. Western Avenue is a good example. So Western Avenue came out of another plan that we didn't talk about earlier tonight. And that's called the West 5 plan. And it was spent uh, some time talking, working with uh, the property owners um, and businesses over in the 5th and Western area. Um, and from uh, our engagement with those folks, they said, you know, Western Avenue is awful. You can drive on it, but you can't do anything else. And uh, they said, you, you can't walk on it. There's no sidewalks. Uh, there's no bike lanes. Um, essentially, you have trucks and buses. Uh, the school district has a couple of bus facilities over in that area. Um, and a bunch of vehicles going at 45 miles an hour. So we took that as going, hey, that's, that's a project that we're, as a city, interested in. We figured out, okay, what pots of money was going to be able to go to that. Um, the Willamette Water Line Supply project is also happening at the same time, and they want to put a portion of the water, uh, the Willamette Water Line in that. Uh, and so they've added some money. So we figure out, okay, all along here, we've got little buckets. How much can Urban Renewal actually put in? And uh, we put in about $500,000 over design and improvements, uh, which is not a lot for the project, but it, it helps. It's pieces. And, um, and so it's kind of a project by project of you know, how do you combine different pots of monies in order to make a project work. Uh, Devin asked, could Vera receive any federal infrastructure monies? Um, actually, uh, it's interesting you bring that up. Uh, we had a federal grant that we did over in the 5th and Western Avenue. It was not a capital project, but it was an analysis of uh, stormwater. And, um, and we were trying to figure out how do we do a, a better job of providing stormwater infrastructure um, over in the 5th and Western area. And so we had a federal grant that um, kind of did a, a quick hit uh, study. Um, you can find that on our, our website and in our documents section. Um, but, but really what's important is how can you, and just like a development project, how do you cobble different pots of money in order to make a project work? Uh, Josh and his work with affordable housing can talk to you probably a lot at some point on, um, you know, trying to figure out tax, uh, 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 various tax credit options and who else can be bringing in um, assistance and then your investors um, and federal grants is another way of doing that regional grants. Um, there's, there's different options and it's not just has to be Bureau money. Bureau is a tool um, and the funding is a tool. Uh, to help bring other monies together in order to make a project work. Hopefully I answered your question, Devin. Okay, Chase. All right. So what are some ways to track all of the stuff that Tyler's talking about going on in Bureau? How can you... Uh, keep knowledgeable about what's going on. Any ideas? Website, newsletter, PDF by Chase Landry. Website, okay. Any other thoughts? So you all have some good ones here. I will walk around. Also very true and accurate. Oh, my, uh, let's see if they pop in here. Oops. 
do it. Okay, so uh, I guess the, the wording is white, so you can't see it there, but yes, there's the PDF on the left. Uh, that's the Bureau Area Updates. They come out about monthly. Uh, share that with you all. Yes, attending URAC meetings. And did you know you can invite your friends? If they really love URAC, urban renewal, or anything going on downtown, you can bring them to this meeting. You can even share the uh, link with them now. Really exciting stuff. But uh, please, if you have people who are interested in topics, you know what's coming up, invite them to this. It's always fun having more folks here. Uh, there's the website there as well. And then... Bureau Area Project Map, currently being updated, but I'm just gonna share what it looks like in its current form with you all now. Here we go. We have on the web page. if you scroll down, go to projects, you will have here the area map, which this version is being retired and Tyler and I are working on a new one with our great information services folks. Whoa. And the Zoom is very aggressive. Uh, and there you go. It lists some of the projects, including you see the West Five brings you to it over here. And you can see where that is on Western Avenue or the Rise Central and a little bit more about it. Uh, this will also include storefront and tenant improvement uh, grant recipients and other plans and studies that have gone on in the area. All right, back to the show. Looks like we have a question in the chat. What do we have there? Uh, when Bureau acquires property, is the goal to keep it for a long time until it gains equity? Great question, Oswaldo. Uh, Tyler could answer maybe a little bit about that if he wants to now, but we're also uh, I think be a good one to field to our uh, property and acquisition folks or real estate team when they come out in spring. Yeah, definitely. I, I was thinking the same thing, Chase Oswaldo. Um, copy that question, put it into your um, URAC file and make sure you bring it in when um, Janine comes in and we'll, you know, because every, every property to answer real briefly, every answer is a little bit different. Uh, or every property is a little bit different and depending upon the particular moment in time. Um, so if you're okay with holding on, um, that's what I would suggest as well. All right, thank you Oswaldo. All right, what are some ways, ways we share about Bureau with our community? You already answered the website, that's a gimme. I'll take that one for you. Word of mouth, okay. Talk, word of mouth. That's a big one, truly. Sharing about it with your communities. You all bring a lot of expertise and you bring a lot of community to this meeting through your attending. Uh, attending events when the pandemic ends. Yep, and some of them, we're getting some new folks who've never been to city meetings or beer meetings before that are attending virtual now. Listening to others, really big. You can't be all talk, even though my wife will tell you I try sometimes. Okay. Document publications on the Bureau website. Yes, we have a lot of archives on there. So we have, in addition to all that, the annual report. Uh, we communicate through our grant programs and flyering and putting information out through that. Public meetings like this one here today. Um, also engagements. So like the downtown equity strategy, and other projects that were out there in the community. We also just do walk around sometimes. Uh, myself, and Kelly, Tyler, Megan, connecting up with uh, employees, businesses, people out in the streets, asking questions. Just wanna keep listening to what's going on. Uh, we do share through the city of Beaverton social media sometimes. There isn't actually a dedicated Bureau social media. So we're trying to improve a little bit about how we share that Bureau kind of does its own cool stuff as, as much as people need to know the difference. And then our 10 year anniversary campaign. So gathering the stories about 10 years of Bureau's work. A uh, few future ideas, uh, supporting your committee member outreach. So you're talking about listening and talking about it. How can we support you in that? Uh, we've shared some ideas in the past surveys. Uh, appreciate that. So trying to give you more bite-sized information in our follow-up emails. And then development education events. This is something uh, I've been thinking about a little bit. What, especially as we come out from the pandemic, 
can we be doing events wise to be present in the community and share about uh, urban redevelopment and urban renewal? Please send me any ideas you have. Uh, Tyler, looking at the time, let me know uh, how you want to move through here. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and uh, briefly hit the metrics, uh, Chase? And... If we have seven approved metrics, we've had more metrics that we are tracking and other uh, smaller items too and components of this, but these are the big seven that are approved by Bureau. You see the valuation, housing, uh, affordable housing, food and drink businesses, and, and kind of getting to density. We're really wanting to work on uh, BIPOC-owned businesses as a metric of understanding how the health of our community is doing uh, with the development funds that we're pouring in. Uh, also, some sort of multimodal traffic ratio, trying to understand how traffic patterns and usage are changing downtown and are affected by our funds. Um, I do have a dashboard that's cool. I, I'll actually share that with you later. I'll see if I can get the link up and working that shows some of 10 years of these trends. All right, Tyler. Okay, so what does change look like? And I think we should probably just go ahead and go straight into the next slide, Chase. So uh, this is kind of for, for me being here for a while, um, and I think for Jen, for and Scott, you probably kind of enjoy this too in, in your roles as planning commissioners and, and being members of the original urban renewal uh, team and uh, planning commission and uh, whatever other committee you had been asked to be a part of over the years. But seeing you know the Westgate site, seeing construction happening where the garage and the art center is located, um, the BG food cartel, um, and if this if this aerial was a little bit further to the south, you'll see you know some changes that um, are starting to happen um, when property that Bureau has purchased that Janine will talk about here in, in the next month or, or or a couple months out. Um, I'm not sure if you were able to do the the thing that you wanted to do, Chase, or not. Yes, this should work. Okay. Keyword, should. I'm going to just drop out of presenter mode here. Oops. I'll get this quickly. It didn't save it, Tyler. So uh, we will share that out with you. Uh, this is a flyover view. And, and as construction has been going on, they've been giving us this great drone footage that is a flyover view of uh, the construction happening at the Reeser, the garage, and really of the round north area. Tyler, are you looking for it right now? Yeah, I've got it, Chase. Go ahead and share your screen. I'll stop on my end. Okay. I'm really hoping we'll get some sort of tie together from the beginning to the end at the end of this project because they've been doing kind of the same flyover every month. Can you see it? Love to see some of that great art on the back of the garage there. For those of you who haven't been down there too, really significant promenade on the front of the Reeser. There's our solar panels on top of the garage. And of course, Crescent Street. Jennifer, you know we are all going to celebrate when that opens. Thank you, Todd. Okay. Last couple questions. Speed, speed round. Here we go. 
Sorry if anyone's seeing flashes there. All right, we have Bureau's five-year strategic priorities, and we don't have too much time to uh, yeah. dive and into. It, yeah, and it hasn't popped up here, Chase. Yeah. Oh, really? Well, good, then you all didn't see my rapid scramble through the entire slideshow. There we go. Well, I guess you will see it now. <laughs> <laughs> Starts over at the beginning for me. All right. There we go. And there. OK, and so um, the five-year uh, strategic priorities. This is in the current action plan that uh, we're looking to update with you. And um, uh, land acquisition was our number one this past year. And um, uh, again, that the dollar today uh, means more than it does tomorrow. Um, and, and kind of thinking about that, what does property acquisition do for us? It, it gives us the opportunity to um, kind of help control the destiny that the community has stated that they want. Um, uh, and um, it, it also helps to start leveraging the private dollar back into um, the area. Um, and so there's a lot of a lot of things that we can do in order to uh, get to those ultimate end goals that um, the community has said that they are interested in, in achieving. Um, expanding the program activities again, the storefront tenant improvement program uh, programs have been a tremendous success. You'll hear more about those here in the next couple of months as well. As Katie K. Atami will be coming in to talk to you about that. Affordable housing, obviously, that is a, the the big one that um, the entire country and, and across the world are are trying to to figure out. Um, we have tools. We have uh, urban renewal. We have the metro bond for affordable housing. Uh, we've got some amazing um, developers out there. Uh, Jennifer, she works also in, in that world as an architect. Um, and we all recognize that more heads trying to crack this nut, we're going to get there. And we're excited that Urban Renewal can, can be a part of it. Uh, the Marianne, as many of you know, by Beaverton High School just opened up. Um, and, um, and we've got uh, what, two, three other projects in the hopper as we, as we speak. Um, and then supporting the, the capital infrastructure, um, the loop and um, Western Avenue, uh, the things like that. So I'm gonna have you move on, Chase. So we're finally at the last one. <laughs> Sorry, hopefully it was uh, enlightening uh, or a good reminder of why we are here. And hopefully, maybe it spurred some, some questions and some thoughts. Um, and um, as we go into 22, but um, the final question is is for you: is What is the top of mind for you relating to urban renewal in the next five plus years? And Chase, I'll go ahead and have you turn off that screen, and we'll see if we can spend. It's 8:30, uh, a couple minutes maybe um, at maximum. Eric, if you, as the chair and team, are okay to maybe open up the floor a little bit of what you see um, and what, what can we be bringing to you as an advisory committee um, in the coming months, um, this coming year, so you can learn more, um, it, you can be um, an influence to helping provide guidance on various programs and projects that we have available to us. See, I'm going to I'm going to turn my head over here to the chat. Caroline, um, has COVID triggered at all? The need to revisit the goals and reprioritize the five-year plan. Great question. You know, we have done, uh, we have pivoted on kind of quite a few things actually. Um, and as far as the, um, the 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 plan itself and those goals, if you look at them pretty closely, they're kind of vague, and they were designed to be vague. Um, because 30 years is a long time. We, we know that something in the first few years, and that's a hot ticket that we got to do. And, and okay, we did that. And, but, you know, this thing comes along 
and changes where we are in the next five years. So it, it provides us with that flexibility. And, um, and that's why we, we use the guidance of the plan for that 30 years. And we have the, the pots and the pie. We have the four sub areas. And we have the opportunity every year to refocus our five-year strategy um, and think about those things within the context of the plan. COVID is a perfect example of that. Great question. One of the things our discussion today has made me wonder about is we, we talk a lot about basically diverse utilization of the downtown and of all of this development. And I wonder if anyone is working on a metric for that. Good question. You know, Chase alluded to the, the BIPOC business ownerships. Um, I think that there's a lot more that we can do. Uh, Rachel Teamy and Keynes Petros, who's heading up the downtown equity strategy with a, an amazing team that um, we will be hearing more from. In fact, at Bureau on the 25th, you're going to be, if you tune in to Bureau on the 25th or watch it later on, they're going to be giving an update um, of where that work is. Uh, uh, they had a couple outreach um, uh, events in mid-December that Chase was involved with that were extraordinarily beautiful um, and, and what they were able to and who they were able to talk to. Um, so you're, you're right on spot on, Jerome, of where we hope the downtown equity strategy helps guide us in the future. Um, because it's absolutely necessary. And I think just if I could add in on that, uh, going back to that listening, you know, planning out, but then also as things come up and change, listening and saying, hey, we're hearing we need a little bit more of this. One of the big things, obviously, during the pandemic we've been hearing a lot about is childcare. Uh, and so listening and how that affects with it. There's also someone we're hoping you'll hear from this year is uh, Sarah King, who's working with THPRD on a parks plan update. So talking about the usage of our parks downtown, should they have workout spaces or covered areas or pools or you know, all of these different kinds of things um, that factors in and, and you listening to you all is a big part of that. Uh, Chase, along those same lines, I think it'd be interesting. And, and you, we mentioned something about this in December, but uh, to the extent possible for, for groups like the URAC to collaborate with Diversity Advisory Board, uh, maybe the Climate Action Task Force uh, as they get ramped up, just, just kind of bring, bring all these, these aspects that we think are high priority, bring them together in, in under you know, one discussion. Great point, Eric. Um, Devin mentions uh, Muckville planning to bring greater access and lake pedestrian traffic link in these projects across Farmington, for instance. And it's exactly right. You know, we uh, the the loop project itself, and I, Devin, you probably had had much uh, chance to take a look at that. But we'll be bringing Dan and Gene back in. They're they're scheduled to go to Bira for an update in February, so February twenty second. Um, so that would be one of a note to. And then they have a, a website as well that you can kind of take a look at. But how, how do we park once and move around in our downtown without having to park and feel comfortable of walking? Um, yeah, there's a lot to that, both from an architectural sp uh, speak um, and making it an interesting walk, um, the safe crossings of intersections and wide sidewalks. Um, you know, those are all important um, uh, bike lanes on top of that. So. Um, Great, great comment there, Tim. Other thoughts? I want to make sure I capture everyone. Um, and I, my apologies for having not great time left over here. Okay, Chase, I'm going to turn it over to you um, with Chair Lear's uh, permission to kind of cap us off here. Thank you, Eric. Okay, I, I wanted to uh, just mention a couple things from an email earlier this month. If you have an opportunity, uh, for those of you who uh, served on URAC in 2021, uh, please do take the survey. Let us know just briefly what you want to hear more about. It's a great way as you think more about uh, what we presented tonight, what's on your mind, what we can bring to you this year, what information you would like maybe a little bit more of a deep dive or discussion on. Uh, please share that 
obviously any time with Tyler and myself, but in that survey, it's a good spot to, to put that. Uh, and as well as uh, the thank you gift cards for everyone who served last year. This is in addition to the general boards and commission thank you that they're, I think, working on. Uh, we just want to say really appreciate you. And this is one little way to, to show that. So if you haven't already, please let us know which of the options you would like to receive a gift card from, uh, hopefully before Wednesday. And we'll work on getting those over to you with our a bit of our appreciation. More time for monthly updates. Is that in the future, Eric, or right now? It, always. Always. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, uh, Tyler, is there anyone in particular that we should highlight? I don't want to just scroll through the whole thing. Uh, yeah. I think no, no, I think, yeah, I think what Jennifer mentioned in, in her warm up tonight, that's probably the big one. Um, the garage should be opening this month. Um, uh, that target date keeps sliding and um, Crescent Street should also be opening, hopefully within the next few days. Um, no guarantee, but that is the, the hopeful target date uh, for those who are affected by Crescent Street closure. Um, uh, so those are kind of, to me, the big ones. Um, as, as you all know, uh, Urban Renewal does not provide any funding towards the, the Patricia Research Center for the Arts. Um, it does, it is a complete urban renewal project as a, the, the, the Beaverton uh, Central District parking garage is a complete urban renewal project uh, with no other funding. So I, I did want to make that clear. I was going to do that in the slides. Didn't do it. Wanted to do it now. That's all I got. All right. So do we have, we have a couple of minutes for our consent agenda here. Uh, Anybody have any changes to the October 2021 minutes? No. All right. Do we have a motion to approve the October 2021 minutes? Kelly, I'm seeing no, you. I'm, I, um, I just noticed a typo. It's a very minor. Um, Eric, you were trying to be the chair in the attendees list. So uh, I'm just going to make that correction because it's just a minor correction. I need to put the vice chair back over to Alan Kennedy uh, where it should be. Then you can make your motion. So do we have a motion to approve the corrected minutes? It's like Oswaldo. We have a second. Rebecca? All right. Everybody in favor, raise your hand. All right. The minutes are approved as corrected. I think with that, we will close January's URAC meeting. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Eric. Congratulations to your everybody. Thank you.